you like, Nicole? Hundred dollars. A popular brand of pocket knife is a what army knife? A. Swiss. B. Dad's. C. Salvation. D. Barmy. I'm really glad I know the first question because I was scared I was going to bomb out, but it's a Swiss. Swiss is in, correct for hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Jape and jest are both words for a what? A. Short story. B. Song. C. Poem. D. Joke. Uh, lock in D joke. D joke is locked in and correct for two hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. Audrey Tutu starred in a two thousand nine film as which fashion designer? A Vera Wang. B Vivian Westwood. C Coco Chanel. D K Mart. I'm surprised I know this because I'm pretty bad with fashion. But I think it's C. Chanel. Locking Coco Chanel? Yeah. As opposed to Kmart? Yeah, definitely not Correct Kmart. Correct for $300. <laughs> 500 A depiction of Isaac Newton appeared on an early logo of which of these companies? A. Nike. B. Apple. C. Coca-Cola. D. Microsoft. Hmm. I'm not sure, so I think I'm going to pass. I have no idea, so okay. I don't want to risk it. See you, Nicole. Thanks. Catch you. Bye-bye. Hello, Matt. Hi, mate. How are you? Matt Padawawa. That's it. From Richmond, Victoria. Have a look at Matt. He's brought his best shoes on for the show tonight. Got have the number look. ones on for you, bro. Have a look at this. Can we get a, get a look at these? The old jandals, are they? Got the jandals on. Yeah, the mate. jandals. <laughs> nice, nice brand of thong you've got on there, buddy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Good on you, Matt. I love that. 31 years of age, a brand manager with TCL Electronics Australia. That's correct. Originally from New Zealand. Of course. Yep. Whereabouts? Uh, a place called Mount Monganui. Yep. A uh, small town and sort of three hours south of Auckland on the east coast. One of seven, one of eight. In fact, you're the only boy. Seven sisters. Seven beautiful sisters. How sport were you? How's what, sir? How sport were you? Uh, I got pretty well, pretty well looked after. Just drives, drives with Mrs. Mad when we go home because little brother can do no wrong, you know. Exactly. So. And uh, your, your fiancé is Tina. Been together for 12 years. And, uh, mate, let's win some money. Let's try. All right. A depiction of Isaac Newton appeared on an early logo for which of these companies? Nike, Apple, Coca-Cola, Microsoft. But I, I genuinely don't really know this question, Ed, but... Knock any out? Probably take out Nike. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with D, Microsoft, and hope for the best. Final answer. Two yes. seconds, quick. Uh, nah, it's Apple. Apple. Apple, yeah. Uh, Apple's early logo featured an image of Isaac Newton sitting beneath an apple tree, preempting the iconic rainbow apple logo of the 80s, which, of course, Apple was owned by the Beatles back then, the trademark. Yeah. So that's what it was, Isaac Newton. So, Matt, I'm sorry, mate. Disappointing, mate. Ah, bad luck, anyway, mate. Thanks, See you later. Mate. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Jenny Dimolovsky from it. Doncaster in Victoria. How are you, Jen? Good, Eddie. A bookkeeper, yes. 42 years of age. Do your own business. Yes, correct. Chris is your husband. G'day, Chris. G'day, Eddie. Welcome to the show, sir. Hugh Jackman sang a happy birthday. He did. Tell me about that. Part of the boy from Oz. Well, yeah. um, my husband got me tickets for my birthday. Back seat, or back row is all we could afford at the time. So I was just happy to be in the same room as Hugh. Uh, there's a section where the light shines on the back row. He speaks to them. I stood up, went hello, and he said, come on down. So down I ran. We got the, uh, he sang me a song, dancing, and then we spent the second half of the show front row. Isn't he just a wonderful bloke? Fabulous. Hugh Jackman, as good a bloke as he's a performer. Absolutely. Well done. All right, we're going to take a break. Jenny, when we come back, I'll do, I'll go better than that. I won't, not only will I sing you a song, I'll give you a quarter of a million dollars. How about that? That sounds good. That's a pretty good run. We'll do it. All right, let's go. Jenny Dimolovsky is ready to play. I love this, Jenny. You've got uh, twin daughters, Megan and Rebecca, 10 years of age, and you say, you and your husband, that's big Chris up the back there, you do as much as you possibly can to embarrass your children as often as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Character no. building. Eddie. What sort of stuff do you do at all? Oh, I've done comedy routines. Um, I entered raw comedy and um, half the routine was about them. Yeah. Um, my husband has many plans for them when they get boyfriends. Oh, yeah, good. <laughs> Such as answering the door naked. Yeah, I reckon the twin girls might have some plans for you as well, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might be the one who's dodging uh, the bullets. Yeah. $500 question, Jenny. Good luck. Excellent. The astrological sign of Capricorn is symbolised by a creature with a head of a what? A scorpion, B goat, C bull, D lion. Right, well my twin daughters are Capricorns, so I have to look in B, Eddie, goat. Goat? 
Yep. Lock in goat. Goat is correct for five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, normally a sea goat with the tail of a fish, but scorpion, of course, is a Scorpio. Bull is Taurus, and lion is Leo. Thousand dollars. All right. The coronations of kings and queens of England are traditionally held in what abbey? A. Winchester. B. Clarendon. C. Westminster. D. Blenheim. Actually, one Blenheim. of the, Blenheim. One of the Blenheim. Places, mm, uh, definitely, it has to be Westminster Abbey. We've been there, so I hope that's right. Lock in C, Eddie. Westminster Abbey is in and correct for $1,000. The coronation chair in Westminster Abbey was made for King Edward I in 1296. There we go. It's oh unbelievable. Yeah. Look at those figures. Us little so new, uh, new Australia here, isn't it? You know, 1770, exactly. 1296. They've got chairs made in 1296. Yeah, Europe's a blow. Just shake your head, don't you? $1,500. <laughs> Let's go. The Latin phrase meaning in itself is per a annum, b se, c contra, d diem. Okay, well, I sort of, I think I know what it might be, but I'm not 100% sure. Come on, Jenny, what do you reckon? Well, it's not per diem, because there's a bookkeeper, I know what that is. Um, per annum, no, I'd like to pass on this one, Eddie. Not 100% sure. you got 12 sure. seconds, have a think, come on. Let me think, Latin. Uh, Carpe diem is the only one I really know, <laughs> which is season day. On a, um, no, I'd See like ya. to pass. Bye, Jenny. Thank See you. Ya. Bye. Mark Gladden is 52 years of age from Littlehampton in South Australia. IT project manager with the manager rather with the Attorney General's Department. Annie is your wife of 14 years. Three stepdaughters, Belinda, Tracy, and Rebecca. Do you know the answer to this one? Uh, I hope so. All right, let's have a crack. The Latin phrase meaning in itself is per a annum, b say, c contra, d diem. Uh, pretty sure it's uh, b. Per se. Per se. Uh, so lock in B, please. Lock in B per se. Correct for 1500. <laughs> By itself or intrinsically, two and a half thousand. Problem and Break Free are recent hits for which singer? A. Cody Simpson. B. Ariana Grande. C. Justin Bieber. D. Hilary Duff. Ooh, uh, I don't think it's Cody Simpson and it's not Justin Bieber. Um, pretty sure that it's uh, Ariando Grande. So lock in B again. B yeah. again is locked in. It's right for two and a half thousand dollars. <laughs> Seven questions to go, Mark, for a quarter of a million dollars. Let's play for four thousand. Heathcliff is a major character in which 19th century novel? A. Jane Eyre. B. Pride and Prejudice. C. Wuthering Heights. D. David Copperfield. Uh, pretty sure it's uh, C. Wuthering Heights. Um, so lock in C. Yep, sure. Lock in C. Wuthering Heights. Remember Kate Bush's song? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Heathcliff. <laughs> that's it. Wuthering Heights. Correct for 4,000. Original, of course, from the 1847 classic by Emily Bronte. 6,000. What is the nickname of the New South Wales team in the Trans-Tasman Netball League? A. Starlings. B. Swifts. C. Swallows. D. Storks. OK, Netball. That would be Storks. Um, could be Swifts. That would be Swallows. Might be Starlings. Um, I think I'll pass. 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 Thanks, Mark. See ya. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Hello. Joe Nicholas is 77, a retired driving instructor, now a marriage celebrant, an artist, and a writer from Townsville in Queensland. Mm -hmm. What have you done to yourself? I have a, um, a problem. I do sculpting and the thumb seized up completely and I couldn't use it, so the doctor decided to take a tendon from down here, slot it into the 
so-called hole that was yeah. being mucked up and uh, a couple of pins in there. So how hopefully... Long, how long have you got that? I've had it five weeks and another five or something. Ridiculous. Oh, well, good luck with it. Okay, Joe. Let's win some money now. Okay. All right, let's go. Joe and Nicholas from Townsville, this is a question for you. What is the nickname of the New South Wales team in the Trans-Tasman Netball League? Is it the Starlings, the Swifts, the Swallows or the Storks? I think they're the Swifts. Lock it in? Lock it in. No mugging around. It's in, it's right for $6,000. Joe and Nicholas They are the Sydney Swifts, in fact. $10,000. Which of these types of tree is botanically classified as a hardwood? A cedar, B cypress, C mahogany, D pine. What can be any cypress? Final answer? Mm -hmm. Cypress? Cypress. You want to lock it in? It's in. Ah, oh, Joanne, it's mahogany. Formal distinction is that hardwoods produce seed in fruit or a pod while softwoods drop their seeds directly onto the ground. It means that balsa wood, despite being soft, is classified as a hardwood. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mahogany, and that's it. So, uh, Joe, yeah, I wanted to hear some, some of your work. We'll have to look up and get the anthology. Okay. All right. Thank you, Joanne Thank Nicholas. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck with your Thank you. Hi, Chris. Hi, Good to see you, pal. Hi, mate. Chris Cochran is from Morty Alcan, Victoria. He's an actor. Self-employed, 45 years of age. Lee Sampson's his lifelong best friend. G'day, Lee. G'day, Ed. Good on you, mate. Chris, stick with us. We are four questions away from 100 grand. We'll do it right after the break. Cool. Four questions to go for $100,000. Let's go with Chris Cochran, who is, by the way, descended from Robert the Bruce, the King of Scotland. That's correct, Eddie. There you go. Oh, not too bad, hey? 27 yeah. times. No, 23, so 23 times. 23 sorry. times back. Yeah, but who's counting? Fair enough. Ten, $10,000. Good luck. There you go. Thank you. King Chris. <laughs> Launched in 2015, Let's Go There is a slogan of which motor vehicle manufacturer? A Holden, B Ford, C Honda, D Volkswagen. Wow, well, Eddie, um, not much of a petrol head, so I'm just sitting here going, whoa. Uh... I know, I know Volkswagen's Das Auto. Um, do they still make Ford and, Tol Fords and Holdens? They make them. Okay, it's cool. Not and I'm um, not sure about Honda. Eddie, I'm going to take a pass, please, mate. Pass? Yep. There's only four questions left. Yeah, yeah there you go. Uh, Honda, lock in C, please, Eddie. Final answer? It's got to be. Is it? <sighs> now, you grew up in South Melbourne, did you? No, I grew up in Morty. Morty Alec, but yep. you went to school in South Melbourne. Correct. And down the road from South Melbourne is what? Fisherman's Bend, where they make... Holden. Holden. Yeah. Fords go further. Honda, the power of dreams. Does auto for Volkswagen, as you said. Not to worry. Uh, I'm sorry, Chris. Sorry, thanks, Tell Andy, you, mate. Yeah, Cheers, buddy. Hey, hey, Nicole. Hi. Fifty thousand to be won here. You ready? I hope so. Nicole White from North Melbourne. Ten thousand dollar question. Yep. In the 1955 monster movie, It Came From Beneath the Sea, the it is a giant what? A. Octopus. B. Dinosaur. C. Ant. D. Crocodile. I have no idea. I'm thinking A because it's the only thing that really comes from the sea. Um, Ant doesn't make any sense. Uh, lock in A. Lock in A. Makes sense, doesn't it? Hopefully. It's correct for ten thousand. <laughs> Sorry, Mark, you're out of business, which means Jenny, you can still win twenty thousand dollars. Nicole, it's either a thousand or fifty thousand for you. Good luck. Yep. The original Rin Tin Tin was a famous German shepherd dog rescued from the battlefield of which war? A. World War I. B. World War II. C. The American Civil War. D. Vietnam War. I'm leaning towards either A or C. I think World War II is probably too late. Um, it's a German shepherd, so I'm thinking maybe A. World War I. 
Lock in A, World War One. Lock in A, World War One. Jenny, what would you have gone for? World War One or two. Mark? Uh, A. Oh, everyone's going A. A is correct for 20000 <laughs> He actually was rescued, the, the original Rin Tin Tin was rescued in 1918 by US soldier Lee Duncan, who then trained him for silent film work. Right. So the dog, the original dog was the star. In fact, Rin Tin Tin became one of Hollywood's biggest stars, appearing in 27 films. He died in 1932 and his name was adopted then by other dogs for the series of TV and film spin-offs, etc. You're ready! Remember that? I have no oh, idea. Rin Tin Tin was fantastic. <laughs> I love Rin Tin Tin. I've never seen Rin Tin Tin. You've never seen Rin Tin Tin? <laughs> no. Oh, you've got to get onto YouTube and have a look at Rin I'll Tin Tin. I'll have to watch it now. He was almost as smart as Skippy. Yeah, right. Skippy. <laughs> Skippy. She's you. Uh, Jenny, Maybe unfortunately, you you're out of business, anything. which means, Nicole, you've won $1,000. <laughs> Nicole's in the hot seat playing for $50,000. Now, Nicole, I'm going to show you a question. If you don't like the answer, we will switch it, OK? I'm going to give you 45 seconds. In that 45, they either decide you want to play and lock it in or tell me to switch and we'll get the second question up, OK? Yep. What are you going to do with $50,000? Uh, hopefully go to Madagascar if I can get some work. Madagascar? Why Madagascar? Uh, I'm not really sure, but it's pretty expensive to get to, so I can't get there otherwise. What's there so. when you get there? Oh, heaps of cool animals that you can't really find anywhere else, so... Yeah. All right, fair enough, Nicole. This for $50,000. Good luck, Nicole. Which of these best describes the moon when it is at perigee? A, full. B, crescent. C, furthest from the Earth. D, closest to the Earth. I have no idea. Um, gosh, I wouldn't even know what to guess, so I'm going to switch. Going to switch? Yep. Nicole? has decided to go for the switch. Just for uh, argument's sake, what would you lock in? Uh, B. B, if you locked in B, you would have been wrong. Okay, you would have been wrong, so that's good news. <laughs> Closest to the Earth is the perigee of the moon. Here's the question for 50,000. At which Olympic Games did Australian athlete Herb Elliott win a gold medal in the 1,500 metres? A, Rome. B, Melbourne. C, Mexico City. D, Tokyo. Again, I have no idea, which is really bad because I work for a running company. Um, Herb Elliott. Sounds like an oldish name. Um, 1500 metres. Herb Elliott. No idea. What are you thinking? I'm thinking A, Rome, but I have no idea why. I don't think I've ever read it before. I'm not getting any vibes. Um, Ten seconds, whenever go. Yeah, lock in a Rome. Lock in a Rome. What running company do you work for? Uh, start to finish, we run events in Melbourne. Do you? Yeah. What sort of events? Running events. Yeah, I know, how far? Oh, like a whole lot of different yeah. events, uh, up to half marathon. Okay. Have you never heard of Herb Elliott? No. no Herb Elliott, probably, arguably our greatest ever runner. Oh, great. He, not only did he win the 1500 metres, the Blue Riband event for middle distance running or distance running, he broke the world record. Yeah, right. And his uh, great trainer, Percy Serity, was waving the f a, a towel, which was the signal to say, you're either about to be passed or keep going, you're going to break the world record. And he wasn't sure which one it was, so he kept running. <laughs> and he absolutely blitzed the field. In fact, I think if he ran that race now, uh, in the, I think he would have won another seven Olympic gold medals or something incredible like Crazy. that. And he was undefeated, undefeated at 1,500 metres. One of the great champions of Australian sport, President of Athletics Australia, Herb Elliott. Do you want to know a bit more? Do you want to know the answer? I want to know the answer. He didn't do it in Melbourne. OK. And he didn't do it in Mexico City. OK. Herb Elliott won the gold medal for Australia in world record time at the Rome Olympics. Oh! I'm pretty bad with fashion, but I think it's C Chanel. Like in Coco Chanel? Yeah. As opposed to Kmart? Yeah, definitely not Correct Kmart. Correct for $300. <laughs> 500. 
A depiction of Isaac Newton appeared on an early logo of which of these companies? A. Nike. B. Apple. C. Coca-Cola. D. Microsoft. Hmm. I'm not sure, so I think I'm going to pass. I have no idea, so okay. I don't want to risk it. See you, Nicole. Thanks. Catch you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello, Matt. Hi, mate. How are you? Matt Paduawa. That's it. From Richmond, Victoria. Have a look at Matt. He's brought his best shoes on for the show tonight. Got have the number look, ones on for you, bro. Have a look at this. Can we get a, get a look at these? The old jandals, are they? Got the jandals on. They're the jandals. <laughs> no, nice brand of thong you've got. Short story. B, song. C, poem. D, joke. Uh, lock in D, joke. D, joke is locked in and correct for $200. Oh, yeah. $300. Audrey Tutu starred in a 2009 film as which fashion designer? A. Vera Wang. B. Vivian Westwood. C. Coco Chanel. D. K. Mart. I'm surprised I know this. Good luck, Nicole. $100. A popular brand of pocket knife is a what army knife? A. Swiss. B. Dad's. C. Salvation. D. Barmy. I'm really glad I know the first question because I was scared I was going to bomb out. But it's a Swiss. Swiss is in, correct for hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Jape and jest are both words for a what? A on there, buddy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Good on you, Matt. I love that. Thirty-one years of age, a brand manager with TCL Electronics Australia. That's correct. Originally from New Zealand. Of course. Yep. Whereabouts? A uh, place called Mount Monganui. Yep. A uh, small town and sort of three hours south of Auckland on the east coast. One of seven, one of eight. In fact, you're the only boy. Seven sisters. Seven beautiful sisters. How sport were you? How's what? So? How sport were you? Uh, I got pretty well, pretty well looked after. Just drives, drives with Mrs. Mad when we go home because 